Preface The beginning of slavery can be marked when humans began to settle down. As cities and towns began to take shape and people began to conquer lands so that they could grow food for their people is when the concept of slavery began. Wars and battles were the time when slaves were taken and free labour was used as household and field help. Besides the wars, the pirates also sold their captives as slaves for money, and sometimes there were criminals who were given the punishment to spend their lives as slaves. Even a debt that couldn't be paid on time would lead to servitude. Slavery was more evil in the ancient civilizations as it would carry on for generations. A slave's child would automatically be a slave. However, most families prohibit the slaves from raising families. There was slavery in every civilization, but their positions in the respective societies were quite different. Introduction Slavery has been around since 6800 BC, when human began to gather in Mesopotamia. Walls were built around the towns, which clearly showed they were preparing for war. Clay drawings from Sumer of 4000 BC also show how slaves were forced to work and even whipped. Papyrus reveals records of slaves being kept with the citizens of Egypt. The records date to 2100 BC. The first recorded price of a slave is 11 silver shekels. Slavery soon became business and an Egyptian expedition records 1,554 slaves captured from Syria. The legal status of the slaves was first mentioned in Babylonian codes in 1790 BC that said they were lesser worthy than other people of their society. This code continued to exist till 4,000 years in the history of mankind. A physician would have his hands cut if he committed a grave mistake while treating his patient, but for a slave he wouldn't have to face the same law, instead simply have the slave replaced. The laws did protect the slaves from severe abuse, but the laws also stated that they were to be treated as property. In short, the whole world has been indulged in keeping slaves even thousands of years ago. Africa There were different forms of slavery in Africa, and it was the part of African societies. Many societies in Africa differentiated them through those who were captured in battles and war among those who were born as slaves. Back then, if people couldn't own land, they held slaves to show their influence. While some families were quite strict with their behaviour towards the slaves, some of them were liberal enough to integrate them in their family and the slaves then rose to important positions in the society. Africa was quite famous for human sacrifices and slaves were often used for this purpose. They were also used to make payment against debts and those who were found strong were trained and put to use in military. Slaves were mostly used as domestic services and they were a part of the household. Some could earn from their labour and could also get married and give their own lands to their children. Another form of slavery was chattel slavery, where a slave was considered to be the property of his master and if they had children they were kept by the masters of the household. Slave trading was so popular that it was considered the second best after trade relationships with other civilizations. Even before the Europeans, Berbers and Arabs intervened in slave trade. In Africa, slavery was something which was already established in the African society. The chiefs of different tribes and societies bartered their slaves to the Ottoman, Arab, European and Berber trades for spices, clothes, rum or other merchandise. Slavery flourished in the Kingdom of Congo before the Portuguese arrived here. The castle kingdom, what is Senegal and Kay's region of Mali today, was highly dependent on slavery for their economy. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Benin became quite rich because of slave trade. Although the buyers preferred male slaves, but women and children could be easily captured. Once the slaves were captured, they would be taken towards the coast to be traded, but several died on their way because of less food and many diseases. The slaves thought that the Europeans were cannibals, and they always feared they would be eaten. However, this fear of being eaten was nothing compared to their journey in the waters. In North Africa, in Algiers, during the 19th century, about 1.5 million Europeans and Christians were forced to become slaves. 
Later, on August 27, 1816, the Dutch and British made a move to bring about an end to slavery, and this movement was known as Bombardment of Algiers. Thousands of slaves were freed at the Bay of Algiers. Slavery persisted in Africa for a long time, and even though currently keeping slaves is a crime, there are certain places that currently practice slavery. Ghana, Benin, Togo, Libya, Nigeria, Mauritania, Democratic Republic of Congo, along with others, still used forced labor. Women are used as sexual slaves, and child rape is also a common affair in these regions. Middle East Slavery in Middle East was first seen in ancient Near East. According to the scholars, there were between 11.5 million and 14 million slaves that were kept for more than 12 centuries in the Muslim nations. Sharia law determined that children of prisoners or slaves could be taken as slaves, but only if they weren't Muslims. The Muslims were encouraged for manumission, which is the act of freeing slaves by their masters. Manumission was thought to relieve one from their sins. Although the Islamic law states that there is no colour or racism when it comes to slavery, however, in practice, this was quite different. The Ottoman Empire made slavery legal in their kingdom, and it continued to remain except for the slavery of Caucasians, which was prohibited in the beginning of 19th century. Slaves from other groups were permitted. The political and administrative centre of the Middle East Empire was Constantinople, which is Istanbul in present day, was known to have one-fifth of the entire population of slaves in the 16th century. There were different measures and movements that were undertaken to stop slavery. Things remained unchanged till the 19th century, and most of it continued in the 20th century too. Women, especially, were sold as sexual slaves. It was a part of the Ottoman Empire. There was a class in the Ottoman known as Kol that could rise in status. They could take the position of Janissaries, who were a group of army officials who were loyal to the Sultan. They were Christian boys who were kidnapped and forced to turn to Islam and then trained under strict discipline to become Janissaries. This act was referred to as Dev Sherm, or blood tax, where boys aged between 8 and 18 were taken by the military officers of Turks to be raised to become Janissaries. This practice was started in the 1300s by Murad I, whose intention was to keep the rising power of nobility in check. However, they had better position than the slaves and were paid salaries, but they couldn't get married. In the 16th and 17th centuries, these army men were considered to be the best military unit throughout Europe, professional, disciplined, with high morale. With time, the Turks began to enroll their children in the Janissaries, and this is when corruption began. The Janissaries, who once had the power to replace the Sultan himself, were now corrupted with the Turks and were no longer just Christian converted boys. In a mutiny in 1826, the Janissaries were disbanded by Mahmud II so he could keep a better army which would comprise of European gunners. Leaders in the Janissaries group were killed and the younger ones were caught and exiled or thrown in the prison. The Ottoman administration had slaves whom they raised freely, were sent to schools in the palace and they were made administrators who had high knowledge of the government and were very loyal. Many Assyrian, Armenian and Greek Christian children and women were taken as slaves by the Ottoman Turks in the 18th and 19th century persecution campaigns against the Christian community. There were many slaves taken in World War I too. Compared to the European and Atlantic slave trade, Islamic trade lasted much longer and Sudan and Mauritania still have some traces of slavery left today also. The disreputably famous Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, also known as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, declared that they had revived slavery in 2015 and even set prices for the slaves and children aged between 1 and 9 were 2,000 dinners, which according to them were the highest prices. Women and children up to 50 years of age have been priced by this group. Sex slaves were sold by them to Persian Gulf states, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Americas British and French Caribbean
the French and British controlled slavery in the Caribbean. Some of the important slave societies in this region were Barbados, Guadeloupe, Lesser Antilles Islands of Barbados, Antigua and St. Kitts. There were a lot of African slaves used in this area, and slowly when they began producing sugar by the end of 17th century, slaves became an important part of their industry. Each year, on an average, about 13,000 African slaves were imported to the French West Indies. The business of slavery was thriving so much that in 1685, Louis XVI passed a law that gave some rights to the slaves and the masters were obligated to provide their slaves with basic amnesties to their slaves such as food, clothes and things that were required for welfare of the slaves. In 1794, trade of slaves was abolished by the French First Republic, but in 1802, Napoleon I annulled that diktat in Haiti. Jean-Jacques de Salinet served the French army against the Spanish and British, and his abilities soon led to his rise in post. He was born a slave and worked for 33 years in the sugar plantation till rebellion of slaves in 1791. This rebellion was the first step towards Haitian Revolution. However, his rules were at times so harsh that even the blacks felt that they were being enslaved once again. He had also declared himself as the emperor of Haiti. The cause of his death is still not known, but it was definitely not a natural death. Once again the Republic abolished slave trade in 1815, but the decree was brought into effect only in 1826. In 1848, the French once again abolished slavery in all the colonies with general and unconditional emancipation. In 1833, Whitehall in England declared that by 1840 all the slaves in their regions would be free and for the time being they were asked to continue working in their respective plantations. All the slaves were given the status of an apprentice until 1840. In 1834, on the 1st of August, a group of Negroes who were elderly were addressed by the government in a government house about the new lords chanted Point de six ans, which means not six years. No six years. They continued their peaceful protest and ultimately their voice was heard. Trinidad became the first British colony with slaves to have abolished slavery on August 1st, 1838. Soon, the other nations were also pressurized to abolish slavery in their respective nations, and France soon followed the footsteps of Great Britain. Haiti was already free, and only a few islands in the Lesser Antille, as were now controlled by the French indigenous people. Debtors and prisoners of war were the ones who suffered slavery in pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. Those who were not able to give back their borrowed money were made slaves and had to work till the debt they owed was paid off. The Mayans were always on their lookout for slaves to put them to work for constructing temples and use them as human sacrifices. The Aztec writings prove that about 84,000 people were sacrificed when a certain temple was inaugurated in 1487. However, unlike most other places, the children of the slaves were born free. The Inca Empire had a different system to extract work, whether or not this was slavery or not isn't quite clearly yet. Every family in the empire was supposed to send a worker to work for the taxes they owe the government. This mandatory public service was known as Mita. Later on, the Spaniards also adopted this form of extracting labour work from families, which was extensively used in the silver mines Bolivia. Among other tribes and societies that practiced slavery were Caribs of Dominica, Teolech of Patagonia, Yurok, which was a fishing society that stayed along the coast, now Alaska, Klamath, Comanche of Texas and Pawnee. The Tlingit and Haida were also famous for slave trading. These indigenous people were famous as fierce warriors. Almost one-fourth of the Pacific Northwest tribes were slaves. Brazil a little more than 35% of the Atlantic slave trade was sent to work for sugarcane plantations and mining in Brazil. No other country imported more slaves than Brazil. The Portuguese began trading African slaves for the sugarcane plantations in 1550 because the native population of Brazil, known as Tupi, began to decline. In 
On February 12, 1761, the Portuguese Prime Minister Sebastião José de Carvalho e Melo, also the first Marquis of Pombal, abolished slavery in the Portuguese mainlands, but this did not stop the colonies that were overseas from prohibiting the practice of slavery. From the rich to the poor, everyone had slaves. Bandeirants, who were a mix of natives and Portuguese, raided the areas along the Amazon River in search of slaves. The raids were so bad that a French traveller revealed back in 1740s that the once flourishing river banks were now barren with no sign of any human. In southern Brazil and Paraguay, people, specifically the Jesuits, prepared Jesuit reductions that were a type of settlements constructed in the 17th and 18th centuries for the indigenous people in South America. These Jesuit reductions were built to fight the people who wanted to enslave the local people and they existed even in the 19th century. The indigenous people captured were taken to work on rubber plantations. Abolition of Slavery in Brazil The escaped slaves from Brazil and other countries such as Cuba, Suriname, Jamaica and Puerto Rico formed villages which were known as Quilombos or Palenques. These were known as maroon communities. The Maroons made a living by hunting and growing vegetables. They also attacked plantations sometimes and robbed livestock and burnt down the crops. They killed the slave masters of the plantation and asked their slaves to join them. A French painter of the 19th century by the name of Jean-Baptiste de Pré played an important role in bringing up the subject of slavery to help abolish it through his paintings. Another group of reformers by the name Clapham Sect also helped in stopping the ongoing slave trafficking. The sugar produced by the Brazilians was quite low in cost compared to those produced by the British colonies in West Indies. This was because the cost of slave production in Brazil was cheaper than those of the British. In the end of 19th century, every person residing in Britain usually consumed about 16 pounds of sugar annually. Because of this, the Brazilian government was pressurized by the British government to end slavery, which did not happen instantly, instead was dragged over for decades before it stopped. There were different stages of slave abolition in Brazil. It began with the banning of foreign slave trade in 1850. Following this was a movement where all the sons of slaves were made free in 1871. Later, in 1885, all the slaves who were aged 60 and above were free to go. Several slaves enlisted themselves in the army in exchange for freedom when the Paraguayan War happened between 1864 and 1870. The war is considered to be one of the deadliest and bloodiest wars in the history of Latin America. The great drought in the northeast of Brazil between 1877 and 1888 was a major disaster for the country. People starved and there was unrest in the nation. The rich plantations sold their slaves in south, which resulted in resistance of the slaves, and this somehow also led to emancipation. By 1884, Ceará was free of slavery, and on May 13, 1888, by the Lei Aurea, slavery was legally ended in Brazil. The country was now using immigrant labor from Europe. In the Western Hemisphere, Brazil was the last to banish slavery from their country. Anglo-North America there were 20 Africans brought to Jamestown, which was an English colony in Virginia, in 1619. Very few slaves came to British North America because they were mostly sent to Brazil, Caribbean and Spanish America to work on sugar or rubber plantations. By the 1680s, there were colonies of African slaves that were brought to the English colonies and it was permitted by the Royal African Company, England. Between 1640 and 1670, many English colonies such as Virginia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maryland, Carolina, New York and New Jersey were also legalized for slavery. The main reason for the English to use slaves from Africa for their work was because the indentured servants had already worked through their terms and were now contenting their masters. However, these servants, who were just free from their terms, were not able to match the competence of the bigger plantation owners. The large planters dominated the tobacco industry. The indentured servants, who were now free, formed alliance with the African slaves, which upset the ruling class. Amongst this havoc is when the Bacon's Rebellion happened. There were different laws and models established, which gave the masters absolute control of their slaves.
They brutally controlled the slaves, turning the society into one where the whites were considered to be aristocrats and superior in class. In the 17th and 18th century, there were many slave rebellions that took place. Some of the known ones are Gloucester County, Virginia Revolt of 1663, New York Slave Revolt, which took place in 1712, the Stoner Rebellion of 1739, and New York Slave Insurrection, which happened in 1741. Early United States Law in 1777, Republic of Vermont banned slavery in its constitution and upheld the same in 1791, when it became a part of United States. Slavery was abolished in all the northwest regions of Ohio River by the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 under the Congress of the Confederation. All the northern states were freed of slavery by the revolutionaries by 1804. What remained were some slaves who were of a certain age and were converted to indentured servants lawfully and willfully. On January the 1st, 1804, Congress put a ban on export and import of slaves. However, internal slave trade continued to exist. Despite the protests and different movements, the free blacks faced racial discrimination until 1833 slavery continued to exist in Canada legally. However, later on, after 1833, Canada became a place where the slaves could take refuge in. They used the Underground Railroad and made their way to the north. In 1854, when the Kansas-Nebraska Act was passed, there was a clash in the Kansas region to whether it would be taken into the Union as a free state or a slave state was completely on the decision of the inhabitants. A group of pro-slavery who defended the act of slavery saying that the economy would collapse without slaves, came to Kansas from Missouri and formed a regional government which did not include the abolitionists. They tried to establish a pro-slavery constitution in the state through violence. The Supporters of Sovereignty The Northern Democrats were angered by this act, and there, to add fuel to this fire, was the delay of Buchanan administration that were unable to submit the constitution to a referendum. The anti-slavery policymakers went along with the Republican Party, which was just formed. In 1857, in the Dred Scott decision, the Supreme Court declared that one was free to take property anywhere, even if the property was chattel and the individual had crossed into a free territory. It also declared that the African Americans could not be state citizens. Outraged critics did not accept any of this, and the power of the slaves, who were politically organized, increased in the country. Civil War United States had a population of 4 million people. The North had just 1% of blacks living there, while 95% of their population was concentrated in the South. In the 1850s, the main problem in politics was that slavery was being extended to the western regions, which the people of North did not like and opposed the idea. Because of this, the Whig Party dissolved and was replaced by the new Republican Party in North. This party was keen on addressing the expanding slavery problems. The Republicans got majority in all the northern states and sent out a message that slavery was something which was not acceptable in the modern society and was a hindrance in the modernization of the economy. There were many policies that were forwarded as compromise, but they never made it ahead. Majority voters in the north wanted to stop slavery from expanding, which they thought would eventually bring an end to slavery. The voters in the south were not happy about the treatment they were getting. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln and his party won, and he became the first President of the United States of America. Some of the southern states believed that the power of cotton industry would overpower the North and also get the support from Europe. Keeping in mind these thoughts, the Confederate States of America was formed, which promised to uphold slavery. There was conflict among two sides, and a war broke in the month of April on 1861. Both sides had enthusiastic young men, and new energetic armies were formed on both the sides. The northern states aimed on preserving the Union because they wanted to uphold American nationalism. The northern leaders were now aware that something had to be done about the slavery in the South. The proposal for compensation emancipation announced by President Lincoln was rejected by all the border states. Leaving aside Delaware and Kentucky, abolition of slavery had already begun in 1865.
President Lincoln had issued an executive order of emancipation proclamation on January the 1st, 1863. The order changed the face of United States government when all the three million slaves to now designated as free. If a slave ran away or was freed by the federal troops or escaped the Confederate government, they were free. The owners of the plantation became quite strict with their slaves and moved them deeper in south and kept them away from the Union Army. The Union Army freed all the slaves and controlled the Confederacy by June 1865. The owners were not compensated and more than 200,000 blacks and freed slaves fought alongside the Union Navy and Army, earning themselves the position of citizens in the United States. War had a bad effect on the population of the blacks, as many were succumbed to sickness and death. Once the liberation happened, several chose to continue working on the plantation and many took refuge in the camps that were run by the Freedmen's Bureau. In the camps, they were given housing, clothes, food, medical help, church facilities, legal support and also contracts for labour jobs. There were many arguments that happened over the rights of the freedmen and that of the confederates who were defeated. Among these debates, there were many black leaders who were assassinated, and this period is known as the Reconstruction Era, which is considered to be between 1863 and 1877. Although after 1877, the Democrats regained their power and once again controlled the southern states, but slavery was never established back. The blacks had lost all their power, which they had gained, and in 1900, they were not allowed to vote, too. They were now living in poverty and worked as tenant farmers or laborers, and they were now just second-class citizens. There were very few who owned land. The Baptist church that the black went to was their center of community, and here is where their leadership also existed. Classic Era Greece Slavery in ancient Greece began in Mycenae, Greece, although the exact origin of it is unknown, but it was definitely an important part of the economy once the cities were established. Most of the citizens of Athens had at least one slave, and the Socratic dialogues mentioned that it was necessary to have one, and not just simply a necessity. Rome Slavery among the Romans was taken from Greece. The Romans had a habit of enslaving the entire population as they extended their boundaries and made them work in their quarries, farms and homes. The Britons, Germans, Jews, Berbers, Thracians, Arabs and Slavs, along with many more tribes, were used as sex slaves and gladiators. Runaway slaves would be crucified. Middle Ages Venice the eastern Mediterranean and the Black Sea was controlled by Venice from 12th and 13th century, respectively. Georgians, Slavic, Turks and Baltic, along with other ethnic tribes from Caucasus and Baltic Sea, were traded as slaves. Once the Baltic and Slavic groups became Christians during the late Middle Ages is when European slavery came to an end. There was no rule that stated that slavery was to be inherited, and slowly slavery turned to indentured service or forced labour. In the mid-14th century to the 18th century, the North Africans sold slaves from Portugal, Italy, England, France and Spain. This has been mentioned in the book of Christian Slaves, White Masters. However, the same book also mentions that white slavery was reduced because the Europeans were preferred to be treated as evil colonists and not just victims. The Tatars, in 1575, captured about 35,000 Ukrainians, 40,000 in 1676 and about 60,000 in 1688. Most of the people were sold as slaves. British Isles Debt slavery, voluntary slavery and slaves from war had existed in British Isles even before 1066. Slaves were bought and sold and the slaves also ran away from their masters. Slavery was not as important in British Isles in the Middle Ages. After the Norman Conquest law did not support slavery in the system and the slaves became a part of the serfs. Mongols the Mongols were famous for taking slaves, and in the 13th century they captured thousands of people from their raids, whom they sold as slaves in Sarai or Karkurum, in all of Eurasia. They usually took women, skilled men and children. Many slaves were also shipped to Novgorod, where there was a slave market.
The Genoese and Venetian merchants were usually the people who handled slave trade in the Middle Ages with a golden horde, a Mongol by the name of Batu Khan initially. When the golden horde was under Khan, Dok Tamish, Moscow was sacked in 1382. The whole city was burnt down and thousands were taken as slaves. Within a decade, about 10,000 Eastern European slaves were sold between 1414 and 1423 in Venice. Slave trading was organized by the Genoese merchants from Crimea to Mamluk Egypt. The Astrakhan and Khanates of Kazan raided Russia to capture slaves, and there are a total of 40 raids that the Russians have recorded in their books in the first half of 16th century. Crimean Khanate was formed after Haki I, Giray, broke away from Golden Horod in 1441. The Khanate had slave trade relations with Middle East and Ottoman Empire till the 18th century. Slavic peasants were taken as slaves in harvesting of the steppe. There were 30 big Tartar raids recorded between 1558 and 1596 in the Muscovite territories. Moscow was an open target for taking slaves. Crimean Khan, Mehmed Jirai, along with his Kazan, took away many slaves in 1521. The Tatars of Crimea sacked Moscow again in 1571, once again, and burned down the whole city except Kremlin. Thousands were taken as slaves. 75% of the Crimean population were slaves. Scandinavia and Vikings About the year 793, the Norse were used to capturing all those who were weaker than them. The people from Western Europe, who were the Frisians, Franks, Irish, Anglo-Saxons and Britonic Celts, were all taken slaves by the Norse, who called them thralls. Slaves were sent to colonists who were staying in Iceland too. From the 6th century to the 11th century, slavery was an important part of the economy of the Norse. Raids were made along the Volga River and the Slavs were terrified and then taken as slaves. In Scandinavia, slavery was banned only in the 14th century. Modern Era Spain African slaves were first used by the Spanish on Hispaniola and Cuba islands as labour. There was too much disease that spread in these islands, and labour was short. The African slaves filled the requirement of manual labour, and the Spaniards made themselves busy in the Atlantic slave trade. King Ferdinand II of Aragon had issued the Leyes de Burgos, which were a set of rules that explained the relation between the Spaniards and the indigenous slaves, which was considered as validating structure of compulsory Indian labour in the country. The Spanish missionaries wanted to change this and protect the conquests and slavery. They said that capturing these people was itself not justified. Later on, the Leyes de Burgos was reformed and Leyes Nuevas was passed. Finally, on November 25, 1542, the Emperor abolished slavery. The Bill of Leyes Nuevas was defended by some of the top Spanish jurists and theologists who said that slaving people was unjust and unlawful. This included slavery that the Spaniards practiced on the natives and slavery that the natives practiced among them too. This made Spain the first country in the world to have abolished slavery. The colonies of Spain, however, still had slaves, especially in Puerto Rico and Cuba, where sugar production was done. Spaniards in Puerto Rico used African slaves till 1873 for another 13 years more in Cuba until 1886. British Slave Trade in the beginning of 17th century, the British played an important role in the Atlantic slave trade. Slavery was legal in Canada and all the American colonies. The blacks formed the major part of the slaves, but along with them were whites and even some Britons who were made slaves. After many abolitionist movements and rebellions, which were led by William Wilberforce and a few other leaders, the Parliament of Britain in 1807 made slave trading illegal within the Empire in the Slavery Abolition Act 1807. Britain then fought slavery and its trade, and there was another act passed in 1833, Slavery Abolition Act 1833. About 150,000 African slaves were freed from 1,600 ships by the West Africa Squadron between 1808 and 1860. 
The West Africa Squadron was formed by the Royal Navy, who were based at Portsmouth, and their main aim was to bring an end to the Atlantic slave trade by patrolling the West African coast. African leaders who denied following the instructions were strictly punished. More than 50 African rulers signed the anti-slavery treaty. Joseph Sturge played an important role in suppressing slavery in different countries. He formed the Anti-Slavery International in 1839, which is also the world's oldest international human rights organization. Netherlands Slavery was illegal in the country of Netherlands, but this did not keep the Dutch from using slaves. The Dutch slave coast, where lay modern Togo, Ghana, Nigeria and Benin, were the main areas where they traded in slaves. They shipped to Brazil, and later in the 17th century they were supplying the Spanish colonies with slaves. Ghana and Suriname were the major markets for slaves in 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. There were ten fortresses from where they supplied slaves across the Atlantic. Netherlands was the last country to abolish slavery. Although the law of abolishment was ratified in 1863, it took ten years for the transition to complete. This was mentioned in the law. Suriname was free of slavery only in 1873. Barbary Corsairs or Ottoman Corsairs They were pirates and traded in European slaves from their main ports in Rabat, Algiers, Tripoli, Tunis and Seoul. This region was referred to as the Barbary Coast in Europe. Barbary came from the inhabitants living here who were known as Berber. Europe was terrorized from their raids between 16 and 19 centuries. They captured thousands and asked their families for ransom. Some were sold and some they used as slaves for them. When North Africa was conquered by Europe and the naval fleets of the Ottoman Empire declined in power is when the raids became lesser. Modern Europe Soviet Union the government of Soviet Union under Stalin was harsh and they put prisoners, political prisoners and street children into gulags, which was said to be a corrective labor colony. However, it was a labor camp where these people had to work under severe harsh conditions. There were 14 million people who were working here when it existed. It was only after 1954 that the new government after Stalin's death began closing the camps down. The MVD order issued in January 1960 finally terminated Gua. Germany Like the Russians, the Germans too ran labor camps and there were different categories in them. The Jews were forced to attend these camps. They worked on the farms, bridges, railroads and wherever the Germans found it necessary. This was more of forced labor rather than slavery. Asia Ancient China between 221 BC and 220 AD, slavery was practiced in the Qin dynasty and Han dynasty. Men who were found guilty of rape were published with castration and were made eunuch slaves. In the rule of Qin government, the property of the punished prisoner was confiscated and even the family members were taken as slaves. Emperor Gao of the Han dynasty freed the slaves who were taken from wars and made to work in the farms. However, the same rule was followed for men found guilty with rape or other criminal activities. They were castrated and made slaves or had to undergo three years of hard labor. The families of the guilty would also suffer as they were taking as the property of the government. China The Tang Dynasty bought slaves from different red eyed Jews. These slaves belonged to different parts of the world. Inner Mongolia, Persia, Turkey, Northern India, Korea, Central Asia, Thai, and others. Slavery was prevalent for long, and it was only in 1910 that it was made illegal. India The Islamic invasions in India led to enslaving of the people here. British India abolished slavery in Act 5 of 1843. Korea the Gabo Reform of 1894 abolished slavery from this nation. Southeast Asia The Khmer Empire or the Angkor Empire, which is modern Cambodia, whose rule is considered to last from 802 to 1463 under different rulers, had kept the most number of slaves. The Austronesian people in Philippines practiced slavery.
the Toraja society in Indonesia practiced slavery. Conclusion Slavery is a cruel practice that began in the Kuhn society. It shows how the strong and rich and overpower the meek and poor. Slavery is something inhumane, and to think that it existed is harrowing. Although slavery is illegal throughout the world, there is still some part of it existent in the society in an illicit way. Social reforms and hundreds of organizations still look out to help people who have somehow been forced to work for people against their wishes.